This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we're back here to change out the reclaim valve there. Got some seals here. Not a lot to it from what I see. Never done this, so see how it goes here. I'm a little bit uh, curious. I mean, to look at it, ooh, ooh, two stupid little seals, no big deal, right? Got a valve breakdown here for it. We are leaking right in the middle here, right where the two halves go together. So you've got the lower body here. All that plunger stuff is up there. So all that stuff goes into here. So we've got residual refrigerant in here. I had to replace this Schrader core. I'm kind of curious to see if there's any pressure on it. Yep, look at it. I got 50 pounds on there. Let's see what the other side looks like. Nope, it's got about 52, 50 also. So let's go ahead and bleed that. Okay, I mean, there's definitely, that's a lot of vapor, at least it's vapor. That's gonna be going down way out there to that air handler. So I'm gonna see what my suction is. I see the problem we got here is suction's running 47. So it's, it's not gonna do much. Uh, we'd have to use the recovery machine. Let's go and look and see how the uh, receiver level is. Make sure that it's still up. Yeah, we're going to cheat. Nice, windy, windy, windy. Good test for the microphone. So this is C, and I'm pretty sure that was the one it was. It's been like a couple weeks. Holy crap. That thing is overfilled, like massively. How in the heck? Hell, they all are. Look at this bad boy. It's below zero, which is great. What do we got here on this one? 30. That's disturbing. That is way, way, way full. If it was hot, it'd be bad. But we're also probably... Are we shedding? Yeah, we're shedding. Yeah, we're shedding. This is... We got half the coil shut down. Geesh, it's colder than crap out here. Split condenser, yeah, my levels are super high. Well, this obviously has dropped down because I mean, that's a discharge. Yeah, we're isolated there. Gosh, there's oil there too. I need to go grab my leak detector. So we went ahead and scanned this over and I did not pick up anything on any of those. So to see if it was still sensitive enough, let's see if this leaks and sure enough, wham went nuts even with 50 pounds of pressure on it so i mean you can only imagine what that is when it's running 190 to 275 or more this one side here though works really bad got a recovery machine and stuff we're gonna see if we can get that thing uh pulled out of there I'm not sure how well this is gonna work but we have the valve core pulled here we're monitoring over here so we're pulling it in, 3 8 hose, up, out, getting as far as I could, and then going to quarter, unfortunately, for that last bit. But at least this is the high side, discharge side. We'll see if it makes a dent in it. You know, my biggest worry was that there might be a little something leaking through somewhere, and I didn't want to dismiss it. And next thing I know, it just keeps going and going and going. At least this way here, I'll be able to tell if it's dropping, which, I can tell already it's already dropped five pounds of pressure. Uh, the check valve is going this direction, so it's going to pull right through the check valve. And uh, that should get everything out of there. We'll leave it into a slight positive, uh, just enough to get it apart back together again. That way we don't have to pull a vacuum potentially on it. On uh, something like this, you could pull forever in Coon's Age and it just wouldn't happen. I mean, you get it eventually, but it's, yeah. Let's be realistic here. The 3 8 makes a huge difference. The biggest difference is the valve core tool. So we're dumping into a suction side of this thing running 48, which I find to be kind of interesting. It's about the where it was at as far as uh, setting there. It's been a couple weeks, I think two weeks since I've been here. Yeah, it's been two weeks because I was on call and I'm on call again, unfortunately. So live and learn. Um, the tube there on top of the control comes across and goes to this valve right here. And I forgot to close it. So that's probably why we had 50 pounds of pressure. 
after two weeks on it. So I took the cover off and we will close that like that. And that will help out immensely. Uh, that little line, pilot tube looking thing. What you guys, you got discharge here. That's gonna be your suction. That allows it to move it back and forth. It needs somewhere to dissipate the pressure. So if we follow it back, comes to that little line there and that goes over to the suction side. That's where the suction uh, pressure came from. So, yeah, we're already at 20. I mean, it was down to about 25, but it just dropped five pounds that fast. So luckily, this is why I wanted to isolate it and pump out almost everything. That way I knew if I was missing anything and I, I missed it, it was hidden up there. Uh, way up behind there. I got it pulled down to zero. When I first undone it, I, I always do it kind of like this, and it kind of wanted to suck on my finger. So I went ahead, opened that back up a little bit, let some pressure back into it. Now we're in a positive, but even now, it's it's already gone. So we're gonna have to pull a vacuum on this, no matter what. Uh, this is isolated, so I didn't suck any air into the system up there, which is good. We're ready to go ahead and try to take her apart, see what happens here. See if we can get our ladder here that is already up here, so we'll just use it. Probably not the safest thing in the world, but you know, it's all good. <clears throat> May need to go grab my regular ones, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, we nobody nobody over tighten that at all. Nope. Ugh, there we go. Well, it'll give us a chance to take a look on the inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these screws out. I don't think you guys really wanna watch that. We got the big one out top. Threads look like they're fine. I don't see no stretching or bowing or anything like that. These other ones are coming out of my hand. Got the last one here. I'm not a ball and sockets kind of guy. Usually they will strip things out. They don't have the torque that you can get out of the square headed ones. So I don't usually use them, I've had them. But there it is. I don't know how far that's gonna go. I may have to cut it, I don't know. Pilot tubing and power wire. Can't tell if that's really on or off right now. We could probably go ahead and unhook this top here because we gotta replace the seal on that. I don't know if this will, yeah, it won't reach. So just like someone else, I've got a nice rigid one out there. Uh, That'll fit it without clawing the heck out of it. But I probably ain't gonna go out there and get it, to be honest with you. Probably gonna be a hack. There we go. Yep, I'm a hack now. I get accused of it all the time, of using one of those for this, and hell, why, why not freaking use it, right? Okay, there's a spring, and there's that seal that we wanted to change. So right there it is. So let's go ahead and pull this off to the side. Well, that's a long old flipping spring. So there's that crush piece. There's some oil that will retransfer over to the next one. Um, I may see if I can pull the guts out, because if I can pull the guts out, then I will be able to get the rest of it out. Go ahead and put this spring up here on my little table. Yeah, it's a big old piston is basically what it is, and there's oil in there to drip all over the floor. Hopefully, not too brittle. I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of that with some needle noses. Pull it this direction, just about have to. There's the other pilot tube. I should have been, should have unhooked that. All right, there we go. It pulled this direction. Plenty of oil in there. It's still, nope, oh, good deal. It, when it pulled over, we were able to, there we go. And we are getting onto a nut there. Looks like a stainless steel nut or aluminum, probably a stainless steel. And I think we're as far over as we can go. It looks like, let me pull this out. That thing I was grabbing a hold of was this piece up here. So there's that spring and that holds this stuff together. There's that low ring. There's enough oil in the body of this thing that we'll be able to put it right together. And this actually be a, a quick little shindig here. Dip the old finger in there and let's go ahead and get the oil on these. That will help them squish down evenly. Good deal, that one's ready to roll. 
this one here once again this oil once it's uh, you know this has all been poe the whole time i believe i think everything in here in this store got gutted or a good majority of it when they uh switched it over so should not have been no mineral oil in it there's that piece i was telling you about okay there's the end of it that goes up into there like that there's that o-ring that we needed to replace that piece that i said was kind of squarish looks to me like it holds right there there is okay right there's why it was leaking I don't know if you can see it. No, maybe not. Yeah, I can tell you right now, it's 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 tight. It does not want to stretch at all. It's also flat. Uh, in this case here, we're just making sure that our surface doesn't have any gunk on it. So we're just gonna get that thing. Just make sure it's all clean. I don't want any paint anything like that in there and it looks like that's pretty good go ahead and get this other side you can see a little speck of something from paint just completely get all that gunk because man you do not want anything slopping back and forth and causing it not to shift yeah you can see in there that that pipe just literally goes mm from here right to there obviously when this thing shifts it has a plunger a little white seal there on the end of it it's going to stop it there and it's going to allow it to then go straight through because this is a even though it's got a slide thing here it's got it's just a bolt in the middle so it's going to allow the refrigerant to go whoop, whoop, on on out there's a there is a cut in there and that's the surface that it actually is going to fit down into so this would be great if i could pull this out to do that i'd have to lift up like that and pull that out so there is what it looks like i'm just going to go ahead and check it over real good like i said first time doing it so if you've done a million of them you know what you think this is dumb and that's fine you're not who i'm doing this for i am doing it for those out there who are interested in just seeing what and how it works that there's the piece that just goes back and forth i don't see anything in there that should cause any major issues that o-ring literally goes in there like that right there you can see it fits that ledge and just ever so slightly sticks out you can see how that refrigerant's going to go right on through it. So this is going to go forward, stop it there. Refrigerant's going to come through, and on out it goes. Pretty, pretty cool. It's so simplistic, you just like not sure how it works until you look at it from outside in. So there we go. There we go. Bring it back together like that. Oh, it'd be so much easier if I had an extra hand. Like that. Now you won't have to fight it. Look at that. I got the vacuum pump down there. And I've got my wrench. That now will fit right where it needs to fit. It's better. Still ain't perfect because the body of the, nut of the uh, socket's a little bit big. But once we get the threads in there, we'll be all right. This is where you really need a quarter inch. This is three eighths. But good grief, that's so much easier. If there's a ball and socket on the end of it, it'd be even better yet. And I think I'm still gonna run into that issue no matter what anyway. Let's go ahead and get these other ones started. So you're pretty much stuck with what you got. Uh, just a lot of firsts this week first train chiller that I've got to work on that was damaged or yeah had issues and so I got that one done had this that was a first this other one let's go ahead and get it wiped off with our lint free rag here I should have loosened up that pilot tubing 
on the other side for sure. I didn't see it because I'm kind of blocked from this side. You can see here too that there is ports so you can see where it's letting it go in and out. Pressure comes into this chamber here and the other one releases it. You've got hot gas coming into the one side and when that solenoid pulls up it's going to let that hot gas release. It's going to go into the suction side which just leads back to the suction and then it's going to allow it to shift. It fits right there and that's kind of where it ran my jammas on. That's the old one. There's the new one. The new one is slightly different. Great. But this one's smashed down. So let's look at the inside diameters. Inside diameters do not feel the same either. I think they made a mistake, which is really great. I mean, we may have to come back. I guess we'll try it. We'll see what happens. What else are you going to do? Not a whole lot. Okay. And... Watch and see where we are at. And right now that would not work very well without that. So we better get that back in there. All right, so here's the wrench you want to be using for it. This works out great. Luckily, you don't have to tear the body apart, which is awesome. There we go. Okay, there's the part we need there, and then that spring. There we go, and it slid right over like it needed to. And let's measure this thing. Outside diameter, 1.87, 1.53. All right, so I called our local supply house, and that's the reason why we just order everything online, because they didn't have it. Yet they are a refrigeration company. And no, we do not. No, we do not. We do not have it. So I'm like, all right, whatever. All right, so it's back on there. And you can see the oil looks like hell. Because we're pulling majority of refrigerant out. I would say probably 99% mainly refrigerant. I should have grabbed my blue hose out there when I did it, but I didn't. We're gonna go ahead and get some numbers off some of these other valves. It was decided it would be a good idea to have some of those on hand. The number off the top, and you can see right there, that's probably where that oil, look at that. There's the oil. So that's where it's been leaking at. That one's been leaking from the top. Yep, 12D, 17B. Yeah, you can tell they've been hanked on before. Wow. That one turned quite a bit. That might actually be better now. That one feels fairly tight. I'm not going to get wild with it. And that check valve was kind of slamming shut when I had to open it up, so it didn't, uh, didn't pull anything back on that. So that kind of explains how it works. So we've got it coming through, and we'd normally be going to there if it's forward. It, it uh, would stop it, but what's kind of crazy is this is obviously closed. So it's pulled back and it's stopping there. If you go forward, it lets it go on through. Let's see what these over here say. Anyhow, let's see how our levels are on this thing again. Still really high to the point where it scares me. Yeah, it's saying theoretically we're over 100%. So we're lucky it don't blow that out. That would be really, really bad. So when we get that heat reclaim on, <clears throat> hopefully that'll, that'll help out a lot. I mean, it's gonna be gas, not liquid, but still, it's definitely not gonna hurt. Unless somebody else added something, because it was nowhere near that when I left here. So. All right. We're in a negative. Valve that off. Because it needs that to be able to control it. There we go. Where's that in? You need to open these ones first, because they are, we're gonna slow. Way we can see if we got let's go ahead and do this other one here a little bit i'm assuming that was probably the uh yeah that's the right way not right away from pliers but <clears throat>
still on a negative over there. There, we're starting to come up a little bit. That's going to starve it. Still opening that center yet. We'll eventually open that up like that. I didn't want to go too nuts so, and screw things up. Did not want to shock anything or anything like that. So that's open and now we're going to go ahead and close this one. Make sure we're going the right direction. There we go. And we'll close that. There we go. And it can go all the way around if you're careful because somebody snapped off the little ball. That's nice. Look at that. We're running 190 something. Forgot to put the stinking valve core in there, kind of sucks. So, woo, doggy, we're going out to the heat reclaim unit. Right here to the heat reclaim, you can feel that plain as day. So one thing I found that I do not like is this right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bubble there. Huh. Ain't much I can do about that. That's why they put that on there. Get on there with our handy dandy other wrench here. I've got this one in my tool bag area. Now this is a nylon, so we don't need to get stupid with it. There you go. Now we'll let that air out a little bit. And nothing there. And we'll go to super sensitive. We got nothing. I've already went through and checked all of my fittings on my pilot tubes, and they're all good. Uh, we're still in split there. I thought it was under sensors. Because heat, heat reclaim, hot water heat reclaim control. Let's enter that. Yeah, see that's the sensor they had right there. It's 59 degrees. And then the one coming in, it's cold down here. So it's, it's, it's ice cold. Now, I don't know if they'll only do one at a time. As you can see, we come out of the unit. Can't go through that bypass. So I ask them over here. This is hot. Comes out of the bottom, goes through the thing. So it's going through the valve, hottest, going down, coming back. As it comes back, there's really no heat left over. So that's why there's not much getting over there because it's getting stolen by the by the heat reclaim. If I turn the heat reclaim off, it should crank it over into that. So let's go into heat reclaim. Go down to here, control value, enter. Let's in uh, log in. Okay, let's go to valve. Let's go enter, override. Let's go next. Yes. Go down, let's go off, enter, override, yes, off, that did it. So the command is obviously what really does it. Okay, let's go back over to here, say enter, override, no, enter, enter, enter. There it's on, I go back and override again, no tack, and it automatically got rid of it. So now, let's go up one, let's go to heat reclaim. Right there it is. We should be able to see the value start to climb. Cut in, cut out, it's 125 degrees, graph it. It's already peaking, let's go into log. Be a little more precision. This went from 57 to 58, so is it doing anything yet? Okay, we are hot going into the top of that one. And we are mediocre coming out. And then as far as this one, we are coming out of the bottom now. And we are not going through it no more. I can feel it different over here. Yeah. So it's going straight out of the bottom of it, going into here. If it shuts off too, it's going to send it out of the bottom back to the condenser, bypassing both of them. Okay, so let's go down here to the heat reclaim. Go into there, scroll over, enter, override. You do override to go on or off. Override, no, enter, enter, enter. Turns back on. So we just ran both of them. 
and see when that goes through, if it would go through, there's a check valve here. So if it did try to come down, it's gonna stop here. Once again, forcing it into this valve, and it's either gonna go that way or it's gonna go that way. It's shifting, which is good. And had a little bit of a hit on super there, which if that's all the more it is in super, I'm not too horribly worried about it. We're not getting anything on the valve body itself, which is where our biggest leak was at before, which is awesome. Yeah, we're getting a little something there on that. So let's go to PPM. Looks like we might get one measly part per million, two. I'm okay with that. Doesn't pick it up on high at all. So we're good there on that. Let's put it back into override off, enter. And override no, enter, enter. Comes back on. Let's go back out of here. Let's go to condenser. Condenser's running 182, so we're kind of not running real stupid high there. Let's go outside and see how our receiver level is. We're still in split, obviously. Nothing changed there. Now look at our receiver level. Now we are running 40%, 35 to 40%. That big old monster line, even though it's hot gas, it likely is going to condense in that coil. I mean, it's an air coil and it's running room temperature air across it, which is, you know, not as cold as out here, but it's turning into a condenser. So you're going to get liquid. And when you condense like that, it's going to take up space. Good deal. It's good to know that. That's something to learn and think about for later. Definitely a good thing to think about for later. All right, well, we're gonna lock this door back up. I'm pretty happy. Other than being given the wrong gasket, which I don't think was our fault. All right, guys, that's the return trip. So that's what we ended up doing. If you enjoyed watching the video, make sure you hit like, thumbs up. Check out these other videos that are popping up and check out these two other guys that I recommend. They got good videos too. Till next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.